Hey everybody, welcome to 50's Friday with Blair Fredilius. What we're going to do is play you a song that was popular in the 1950's. It could be any style of music whatsoever. And then if you stick around after the song, I'll tell you a few interesting facts about the song which you probably have never heard before. So today for our inaugural edition of 50's Friday, I'm going to play a classic song from 1954 called Rock Around the Clock. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. Put your glad rags on and join me, huh? We'll have fun when the clock strikes one. We're going to rock around the clock tonight. Rock, rock, rock till dawn tonight. We're going to rock, going to rock around the clock tonight. The As I mentioned, that song came out in 1954, uh, but it was actually first recorded by an Italian-American band called Sunny Day and the Nights. And that song that they recorded came out about three weeks before Bill Haley's version. And the reason is his manager at the time said uh, he could not record it for the label he was currently working for, which was Essex Records. So in the spring of 54, Bill Haley signed with Decca Records, and they made the recording session for Rock Around the Clock on April 12, 1954. However, that recording session almost didn't happen because the band was traveling on a ferry boat that got stuck on a sandbar when they were trying to get to New York from Philadelphia. Well, once they finally got there, the producer, whose name was Milt Gabler, he's actually the uncle of Billy Crystal, and uh, he basically said that the band had an, and one, there's another song that he wanted them to record called 13 Women and Only One Man in Town. Kind of sounds like one of those songs you'd hear today on a rap or hip-hop record. Anyway, um, that, he insisted, was the song that was going to be the A-side of their next single. So they recorded that song, and near the end of the session, they finally convinced their producer to re uh, let them record Rock Around the Clock. But Bill Haley's vocals were drowned out by the band playing so loud that uh, a second take was needed. So what they did was they took those two takes and they edited them together. So what you hear is actually two different takes. Now, the song became very popular about a year later, in March of 1955, it was used in a film called Blackboard Jungle, which was kind of one of those teen dramas about the troubled youth of America. Well, how did the song get in the movie in the first place? Well, it turns out it was a record in the collection of Peter Lawford's, I'm mean, not Peter Lawford, sorry, Glenn Ford, Glenn Ford's son, um, Peter, and Glenn Ford was in the movie, and uh, he was married to Eleanor Powell, who was also a great dancer in uh, a lot of Hollywood films. 
But their son Peter had that record in his collection, and so Glenn Ford decided to use it in the movie, and that's how it became so popular. The movie was a hit, the record was a hit, and then finally, um, well over a year after, it was originally recorded and released as a B-side to 13 Women and Only One Man in Town. It became a number one hit on July 9th, 1955, and it stayed at the top of the charts for eight weeks. So, hope you enjoyed that little history lesson about Rock Around the Clock, and we will see you tomorrow for another adventure in music with Blair. Thanks.